Welcome to the third episode of Storm Psychology. If you're not yet familiar, this is a series where we learn about a psychological concept, connect it to here is the storm, and then find out how to apply the theory into practice to help us do better in the game. Now, today's topic is going to be on the diffusion of responsibility, which is a phenomenon where someone is less likely to take responsibility for taking action when there are other people around. In simpler terms, it means that if you are with a group of people and you guys need to complete a task, you are more likely to slack off because you assume that someone else in the group is going to do it. So how does this work in real life? Well, a simple example might be when you are doing a group project in school, and you might see one group member doing all the work, uh, usually the smart kid, uh, while everyone else barely contributes. On a larger scale, uh, you might be familiar with the name Kitty Genovese. In 1964, over 50 years ago, a woman named Catherine Genovese, better known as Kitty, was stabbed twice right outside her apartment building. The attack happened at 3.15 a.m., and the noise got the attention of her neighbors, but nobody called for help. The perpetrator left, then returned to continue stabbing Kitty. Then he proceeded to rape her, steal $49 from her, and then he finally left again. At 4.15 a.m., an hour after she was originally stabbed, an ambulance finally took her away, but she died on the way to the hospital. The reason they were so late it took the neighbors that long to call for help because they assumed that somebody else would do it. Your diffusion of responsibility could also cause a death. Now luckily, we're playing Heroes of the Storm and not real life, so the death is impermanent. But it's still worth noting how this phenomenon lives inside the game so we can avoid a falling victim to it. Uh, diffusion of responsibility manifests itself in Heroes of the Storm in three different forms. The bystander effect, social loafing, and risk-taking. So, the bystander effect is where people stand around doing nothing because they expect other people to take action. Social loafing is slacking off because people feel less responsible for something that happens, specifically uh, only 20% responsible in Heroes of the Storm because you are one player out of a team of five. And risk-taking, uh, where people are more likely to take risks because the blame for failing is distributed across five people instead of just one. Some examples of the bystander effect in Heroes of the Storm uh, can be seen in capping, uh, such as capping mercenary camps or even watchtowers, uh, when two people stand on a zone to cap it, and then both of you end up running off too early because you both assume that the other person finished capping. Uh, securing kills, when an enemy hero is one hit from death and you let them walk away so you can, you know, like start focusing on other targets, maximize your damage output uh, under the assumption that someone else will throw out that last basic attack to finish them off and then nobody does and then they get away. And wasting the Garden Terror. Your team has finally collected enough seeds to spawn the Garden Terror, but nobody actually ends up taking it because nobody goes back to base to claim it and then it despawns and it gets wasted. All right, and moving on, some examples of social loafing uh, in Heroes of the Storm uh, can be seen in objective gathering. So for example, uh, on Tomb of the Spider Queen, uh, players might go around looking for ganks instead of farming and turning in gems. The same thing for Blackheart's Bay, uh, farming and turning in those doubloons, those little coins. Uh, so there actually used to be an end game stat on the score screen called mechanics that would show how many objective related things you successfully did. Uh, so for example, on Tomb of the Spider Queen, the object or the uh, the mechanics score would be how many gems you turned in that game. Or like and Black Hearts play how many coins you turned in that game. Uh, but now that no longer exists. Uh, and it's very easy to feel less personally connected to doing this because now you can claim that you're not the only one who's supposed to be doing this, but the rest of your team as well. 
The same thing, uh, same idea goes for experience soaking as well. Saying, for example, uh, why are you blaming me for not soaking? There's four other people who could have been doing it. And that is social loafing. And finally, some examples of risk taking in Here's the Storm can be seen in chasing for kills. So if your team wins a 4 for 0 fight and you decide to attack their keep while listening to the beautiful Benny Hill theme uh, and watching the rest of your team, the other four players, chase backwards across the map for that last fifth kill, uh, it's a little difficult for your allies to feel personally accountable for that bad decision because all of them could just simply say, why blame me? There were three other people with me, so it's obviously the right thing to do, even though it clearly wasn't the right thing to do. Another example of this is going for boss. So uh, even if someone might know that boss is a bad idea, uh, it's easy to just join in and try it out if a few allies are already hitting the boss, uh, rather than like pinging danger and typing in chat for them to back off. Now remember, just because you can blame your allies for the bad decision of going for boss doesn't mean that the loss that you receive after getting wiped at boss doesn't count. Because a loss is still a loss. So, what can we do to mitigate diffusion of responsibility? Well, the first tip is to use people's names. Don't use the word somebody, and don't even use the name of their hero. So, don't say somebody needs to go soak bot lane, and don't say Gazlo needs to soak bottom. Say XX Nova Lover 69 XX. You need to go soak bottom lane. Saying their name removes as much anonymity as possible and makes your suggestion connect as personally as possible to that player. Number two is to be specific. The more specific you are, the better your results are going to be. So instead of just spamming an assist ping on the ground near where you are, type out in chat, I need a gank from Zero Tool. I'm getting pushed in, but I have enough crowd control so we can kill him if you come up. Or, uh, I need Uther to stop by my lane and heal me up real quick so I can play more aggressively and start pushing back. Those are two very specific scenarios that are very different that could be grouped together by just an assist ping, but because you're being very specific, it's more likely for your ally to come up and help you in a manner that you need in your lane. And finally, take personal responsibility. You need to be aware of your own personal responsibilities and you need to meet them. If you really want to improve, then watch your own replays and think about your mindset as you were playing and find places where you relied on your allies to do something when you could have put in more effort yourself. So, Ultimately, the only way to climb ranks is to improve yourself. Your allies and your enemies will be random game after game, so there's really no reason to worry about improving them. The only constant thing across all your games is you. So the best use of your time and effort is to improve yourself. All right, so that's going to be it for this episode, and I'll see you guys next Sunday with another video. We're actually starting up a daily video schedule once again, uh, but this time it should work out a lot better because we have seven people on it instead of just Zoya and me, like the last time that we tried it. So, uh, Mondays will be Stray, Tuesdays Goku, Wednesdays KO, Thursdays would have been Soldier, but he uh, stepped down from the roster, so we'll be filling in that spot with like miscellaneous content for now until we have that set um, set Thursday member. Fridays will be Zix. Saturdays will be Zoya. And I'll be here on Sundays. So I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Coco, look. Coco, bye. She was sitting on my lap this whole time. I see what they were trying to do here by moving Chain Bomb to part of his kit so that he would have more option, but I mean, if you look at how many talents he actually has, they were they removed.